Hi guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Know. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and this week on the podcast, we have the one and only Heather Dubrow, who finally returned to the Real Housewives of Orange County for its 16th season after five seasons away. Heather is always such a great interview. I've chatted with her several times, once with Max, once with her husband, Terry, and you know she always just gives really thoughtful answers. And so I loved talking with her about this big return and how she's feeling about it and really what went into it. I mean, she's talked about sort of a little bit why she decided that now is the right time. And I also want to know sort of has she changed at all and have any of those changes impacted her decision to come back to the show or her perception of the show. So again, she she really explained it pretty well. And we also obviously got into the Nobu catered dinner at her house that it was in the premiere and then continued on into the second episode and all the fallout from that. And then she really teased the rest of the season and previewed what's to come for me. So um, if you are a fan of RHOC and trying to get back into it after you know some not as good seasons of the show, um, definitely you'll enjoy this interview. So keep listening for my chat with Heather Dubrow. Tune into The Real Housewives of Orange County Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on Bravo. And please rate, review, and subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so we are here with Heather Dubrow, who is finally, finally, finally back on The Real Housewives of Orange County. Fancy Pants is officially back. Heather, how are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. It's so good to see you. And I think we last chatted, I want to say it was in January or February. It was sort of like the deep, dark depths of of the pandemic winter earlier this year. And we had a really fun conversation with Max. And, you know, I asked you back then, you know, what what are the chances you would ever come back, whatever. You played it coy, but I, but I could tell that you weren't totally against the idea, you know? And, and so I'm I'm curious first for you, when did you first seriously consider coming back? Like, when was it like, when did it go from, oh my God, people won't stop asking me about this to, oh, maybe I will actually do this? Well, they called me last December. Okay. So I'm sorry I couldn't tell you, but. <laughs> I'm not holding uh, it against you. <laughs> I am, Gibson, I am a vault. I mean, like literally a vault. So they asked me, I, you know, I thought about it. And then I th- I feel like we made the decision like end of January, beginning of February, right. probably probably right before you and I spoke, to be honest with you. Yeah. And yeah. and and so, but what we decided was, you know, Bravo wanted to keep it under wraps. And so I was like, okay, great. I, I literally told no one. Our nuclear family knew, and that was it. Not wow. one. I didn't tell my mother. No one. Wow. Good for you. That's that takes well, skill. I'll tell you though, it was partially, I mean, mostly because, you know. I didn't want to. Yeah, it was a big secret. Bravo. You know, like that's, you know, that's what you do. But also because I felt like if I started talking about it, it would be all I talked about. And I just, I felt like it was so far in the future. I mean, it was so far away. Like who even knew when we were going to start filming? First I heard April, then I heard June, then I heard, you know, it kept getting pushed because of Beverly Hills schedule, because of the pandemic, the whole thing. Totally. So I, I just like, I felt like, yeah, when it's real, it'll be real and we'll worry about it then. Yeah. And sometimes these things get too hyped up and then you never know how the filming is going to go and, and things like that. So I think you handled it perfectly. And I think, you know, when we get those first couple of second, seconds of that trailer where you're, where we have your entrance, that amazing entrance, like, I think that that, that really spoke for itself, really, you know, obviously it, it had been announced, but like seeing that for that, those first couple of seconds of that footage, I think. I mean, the excitement around that was just, I mean, mind boggling. It was, it was, it was over the top. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It was fun. I, you know, when we shot that, that was actually the first scene shot for the whole season for anyone. Oh, wow. Was that walk. And then that family dinner that I had with the kids. And what was so crazy about that was, you know, obviously they knew we were going to be filming and the whole thing, but even though over the last five years, obviously Terry and I have had other television projects and we Mm -hmm. do press and I have my YouTube channel. So the kids are kind of used to being on camera and they're used to having cameras around, but Housewives is kind of a different animal. And so I had no idea how it was going to go, but we sat down to have the family dinner. And after it was done, we all looked at each other and we were like, wow, that was so weirdly normal. Okay. (laughs) This will work. I love it. That, that, that meant that you guys, I think, were coming back at the right time too, probably yeah. for your family and that everyone, everyone was ready for that and willing to at do it. At that moment, yes. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're several weeks into your return now. I mean, because this will come out next week. 
how are you feeling? I feel like the love is really overflowing for you and people are so, they're, they're really excited about you, but also the show in general again, I think. And to talk to me about how, how, how you're feeling. I mean, the response has been overwhelming. Like I'm almost like a little embarrassed by it, you know, so, but I, but I'm so grateful, but I, you know, I keep joking, like, you know, classy and elegant and stylish very quickly can morph into, you know, snobby and pretentious. <laughs> so I don't know, hopefully the goodwill will continue, but I, you know, and it's hard because, you know, there's people that are like, everyone wanted to see our house. Please show us the house, show us it. And then you show the house and then there's always a couple of people that are like, wow, how pretentious to show us your house. Of course. Or, you know, Terry and I, you know, have this conversation after the party, um, after the party was ruined. Yeah. About how much money the party cost. It's, you know, we were, you know, he asked me, I answered him. It certainly wasn't like a braggy, let me tell you how much I spent on a party. It was more to, to show like, my gosh, so much time and effort and money to put into an event, to have it nuked by someone. It's yeah. like, it, it makes it even worse. You know, I, told, I, I, I agree. And I think that it's, it's funny about the house is it's like, people have been talking about wanting to see your house for years because we, we people didn't get to see it on the show. And then you show it and it's like, of course you can't, of course you can't win with everybody there because it's just yeah. like, there's always going to be that, those people that, I don't know, but I, I, I thought know. it was really fun. I thought the house tour was amazing. I loved it. I thought it was Thank fun. Thank you. But you know, yeah. I love design. It's really like me walking through this house with people is like me showing my inspiration behind things because I designed everything in this house. And so I, you know, it's a, it's a source of pride to me, not like a braggy thing. It's more like, look, like, look at this, this edge I designed, or look at this iron that I drew on a napkin. Right. It was, it's a labor of, it's a clear labor of love. And I think yeah. that came across in my mind. So I think I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that was, that was shown off. Um, and I also appreciated on when you were on Watch What Happens Live after the premiere, you talked about sort of what fueled you to come back and, and you said, it wasn't the money. It wasn't about stepping back into the spotlight in a bigger way and, and the fame aspect of it. It was more about sort of slight changes and evolutions within your own family and wanting to showcase those. And I, I just thought that was really nice to hear because I think I think people probably assume that it's those other things that I just said, but it's it's yeah. nice for you to clarify that, you know, no, it, it, it was actually a personal, I was really personally kind of felt. A hundred percent. I mean, look, I granted, this is an amazing platform. There, There's no- denying it. We've been so lucky. We are so grateful, you know, and we've worked hard in our businesses and all of that to be where we are, but it really was, it was like a conversation that Terry and I had first. And then like, you know, the pros and cons, cause it's not an easy show to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you can see, truth is stranger than fiction. You have no idea what's going to come out. And um, so we had those conversations, but like Max, Shameless plug for Max's book. I'll give it there to you. There we go. Story. So when when she she wrote me the cutest, she wrote in my book. It's so cute. She's um, the best. When when she came out as bisexual a few years ago, you know, it was amazing. And we got a lot of love and a lot of support, but there were also so many people that, you know, are estranged from their parents mm -hmm. or their kids or kids that had killed themselves. You know, and I've talked about this, but but that is the truth. And I I said to Terry, I go, wouldn't it kind of be cool if we could open up those conversations in other people's homes? And you, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's funny yeah, because when I when I watched the show and I saw Emily and Shane uh, talking about religion, I loved it. And I loved that they they don't they're not on the same page, but they respect each other and sure. It was really, really nice, but I just love that they had that conversation so that other people could have those conversations. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. And, you know, one of my producers on my podcast was saying after that episode, she's like, she's in a relationship with someone with a different um, faith. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's been talking about it. So I, that was my whole thing. Like, let's start those conversations. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. And I think, and, and so is that something that we will see from you guys this season is talking about those topics within your household and stuff? I think what's even better is that there's a couple of scenes with the kids where they talk about it. Awesome. And, you know, it, it, it's pretty, uh, I mean, for all the drama and the craziness and the bad parts, as there are always bad parts, you know, yeah. to doing the show, because of those few scenes, like I wouldn't go back and redo anything. Good. That, that, that's, that's, that's also probably a worry of deciding to come back after so long, which is like, oh, like, 
is it going to be what I want it to be? Or is it going to fulfill me in this, in this X, Y, Z way? And I'm glad that, 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 that portion of it at least lived up to what you wanted yeah, it to be. Did That's really nice. Um, so, you know, you start off the season with this amazing Nobu catered dinner with, for all your girlfriends. And it's, it, we got a to be continued right off the bat because obviously things go left yes. and, and you seem surprised that things go left. And I'm curious, like, did you think that nothing was going to go wrong? Like, were you just shocked about sort of how quickly things went awry? What was your sort of mindset in that moment? Oh, I was completely shocked because I thought we, if anything, there'd be some petty nonsense right. where someone was sitting, who broke the bow off the cake. I'm going to look controlling <laughs> as I throw my party, you know, like something like that. I, I, it's the first party, like nothing needed to happen. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I was expecting like a really nice get to know ya kind of thing. I mean, you, you understand, like, I didn't even get to talk to three of the cast, but I mean, I didn't right, talk was... to anybody. It was like, <laughs> it was insane. And I was kind of bummed also because, you know, when I throw a party, there's mm -hmm. a lot of elements to it. And I love throwing a party on camera, off camera, whatever. And I know they don't show everything, but I yeah. still love a great experience. We did a whole, and we did this part. We did a whole blind sake tasting. There was Fun. a, there was a three-way tie and then um, while they were tabulating the results, we were having people learn how to make sushi from Chef Tetsu-san. And, and we so, didn't see any of that. And we didn't see any of that. And so when there was a three-way tie, they had to each make a piece of sushi and the chef declared the winner and we gave out prizes. Who won? Do we know who won? I wonder if they're going to show it as oh, um, like a, like a, like as a or clip. I'll, I'll save it in case they want to show okay. it. But it was real. But they all did such a it good was, job. It sounds it was so fun. So I'm sorry you didn't get to see more of the fun of it. I feel like we went, like, I mean, that no, could have right. been three episodes, that party, honestly. <laughs> it sounds like it. And the, ta the table setting was so great with the, little, with, yeah. the, with the boxes with everyone's names on them. Ugh. Oh, and I had favors and everyone had yeah. chopsticks with their names engraved in them. And I had activities. Oh and, my gosh. You no, know, just. Yeah. yeah. So when we see that moment of you at the bottom of the stairs, hand in the face, hand on the camera saying like, we're not, we're not filming anymore. Like we're done in that moment. Did you mean that you're, that you were done with the show? Like, it almost felt like you were saying, Oh, we're like, I'm not continuing filming like at all, but oh, it was I just was, that night. I was done. I was, I could not believe it. I got up from the table with Shannon and Gina and I go, I, and I looked at my, I, since I've watched it, you know, I go, um, I'll be right back. And I was thinking to myself, Oh my gosh, it's like, the worst nightmare scenario that I could ever cut. Like I couldn't even come up with this nightmare mm -hmm. scenario that this person that I had brought onto the show, you know, sued Terry 20 years ago and Shannon's dug it up and spread it around and made it a thing on television. Are you kidding me? Mm. You know, there's, there's a code here, right. no kids, no careers. And this like really stepped over the lines really with both in a way. And so I thought this was a mistake. Maybe we could just salvage it and get off and be done. Got it. And so, so you go upstairs and what can you tell me about sort of what brought you back down and what brought you to a point where you brought Terry down and you were like, okay, let me figure this out. Well, you know, first we went down to the producers and you can imagine we were not happy. Right. And, um, and although I can't tell you everything, I, I will tell you that th there were reasons that we were so upset um, because of other things. Um, uh -huh. So we were really shocked that this was sprung on us uh, like this. And it could have been, the story still could have been told in other ways. And we just felt like this was, uh, you know, on purpose and we just were not happy about it. And then, you know, we were like, we're done, get out, whatever. And then Terry and I, went to the side and he was like, where's Nicole? And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, we need to find her. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're totally right. And then all of a sudden I'm picturing all these girls because I didn't see what happened, right? Right. right. And so and I didn't know, but now I'm assuming, my gosh, is she okay? Are they, you know, going after her? Like what is going on? So that was our objective was we need to find Nicole and make Got sure it. she's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you find her and she's sort of just like alone on this couch, like being really emotional. And I was really impressed by how quickly you were just sort of like, let's wipe it clean. I understand whatever. Cause I think other people in your position might not have been that immediately forgiving about like, you know, somebody 
not telling you this little bit, this bit of information. Why, why were you so forgiving so immediately? Because I, I was impressed by that. I mean, many reasons, but first of all, I think she's a victim in this. Mm. And this is her personal medical information. Yeah. It's actually defamatory to spread someone's medical information around. Um, I, 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 I thought, my gosh, something that happened almost 20 years ago, and it was dropped. You right. know, either she thought we knew and didn't want to talk about it, or we didn't know and she didn't want to bring it up for obvious reasons. But like, you know what? It's so long ago. I mean, people are allowed to grow up and Absolutely. change and have a fresh start. And here's the thing. If there was some sinister moment where Nicole was saying, oh, I'm going to start talking about this or you don't even know, you know what I'm saying? Like if there yeah, was like, something like- She, she like, never went to Shannon. She never went to Shannon and really said no. that. It was, yeah, exactly. There was no, she wanted this buried. This was, this is the past. She wanted none of this. We have a lovely friendship and she didn't want any of that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I thought it was so rotten and I felt horrible for her. And how embarrassing. And then thinking that these girls were all coming after her in my house and I brought her on the show and then she gets blindsided right. and all of the, I mean, I just felt terrible. And she was, this is her first like Party. group scene. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. That was, that was, that would be, that would be a lot for anybody. So yeah, yeah. It, it totally makes sense. Um, so your mindset there, but again, I was, I was impressed by that moment. And I, and I think another when you when you go to lunch with Emily and Gina and, and you and you really you get more con you got more context for why Gina did what she did and you sort of you know you're just getting to know Emily and Gina really and I I love that lunch because I think that it, it it to me it showed that you and Gina have this like really natural authentic connection and, and you really yeah. get along really really well and it's really fun like it seems from the trailer that you guys are gonna continue to have fun together what what works so well between you and Gina because I again I think it's gonna be really fun to watch. Um, I, I think we're just both very authentic. I, yeah. And when I met her, I just immediately liked her. And then of course I was, you know, felt betrayed. And then, but when we sat down at that lunch, I love the fact that she immediately jumped in to what was wrong. It wasn't like, how are you? And how, right. how's the weather? And then, okay. <laughs> let's, it was like, I, I feel horrible. I can't do this. We need to talk about this. I so, I, I thought that was amazing. I appreciated that. And I felt so bad when I heard her story about her ex and, and what had happened to her. And it gave, it gave the whole thing context mm -hmm. to me. But also she took accountability, she apologized and she explained to me why things happened the way they happened and, and apologized for not handling it differently. Whatever she said, it made me just go, yeah, okay, that's cool. I get right. it. You're allowed to do that. I think the problem comes when a person doesn't immediately reach out, doesn't take accountability, thinks they're empirically right, um, or blames other people. That's when that's when it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then going forward with Gina, it seems like you just continue to kind of go up with each other and just ha have. I mean, like, it seems like she is really kind of your best friend on the show this season. Is is that is that correct to say? I would say that we became very close, very fast. And I'm very, I love our relationship and I'm excited for everyone to see like us have fun together. I mean, mm -hmm. we traveled a lot on the show, but uh, as a, as a group, but mm -hmm. you know, Gina and I took a trip alone with the twins. And oh my gosh. Is, is that because it looked like there's some New York scenes and, and you guys yeah. are, are New York girl or, or yeah, that, and that's, that's fun. That's fun. That you guys did that. It is so fun. And it's funny because it was like a non-drama housewife trip. Although there was <laughs> right. a little like FaceTime drama from back home. Obviously, drama. obviously they have to put it but in there somehow. It, it's great and it's fun. And, and you get to meet our families. And I, the, I think the audience is just going to love it. Good. I'm excited for that. Um, you know, you and Shannon obviously have a history. And I think that it seemed clear that you both came into this this season wanting to sort of, it seemed like you guys wanted to wipe the slate clean, have sort of a new beginning with one another. Um, but, it, and, and, and kind of from her confessionals and things like that, it, you know, Shannon is saying that she is pretty upset and annoyed that everything kind of blew up in her face. And, and she, she really did genuinely want to move forward with you. How much do you believe that? And how much do you, how much do you think that she really wanted to be on good terms with you this season? 
Well, I mean, we didn't, when I left the show, we were on good terms. Right. I mean, we had one, the first year she joined the show, we did not have a good year. But honestly, yeah. after that, I think she and I were always fine. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and we've talked about it, both of us, you know, we used to take the, the trips and we'd always have fun and laugh. We had a lot of fun, except for the bus ride home. We had a lot of fun in Ireland yeah. together. Um, but I haven't seen her very much over the last five years. So we've texted and I've bumped into her. I think we both came into the season with the best of intentions. Yeah. I mean, honestly, you know, it got derailed very quickly. Why did it get derailed? I mean, I, you kind of have to watch how it unfolds um, and how we try to move forward with the whole thing. Yeah. You know, it, it takes it, yeah. turns. It almost feels like it, there's, there's probably, I feel like, you know, on Housewives, there can be elements of, you know, territorialism a little bit. Like, I think Shannon's been around for the longest of the people that came from last season and what have you. Obviously, you came back, but, you know, in, in, in my mind, there might be a little bit of that in terms of just sort of like, who's the head honcho here, but it, that, which yeah, is an interesting so thing. Funny. I don't need to be the head honcho. It's fine. I know you, I know that that's not your mindset, but it could be somebody else's, you know? Maybe, maybe so. Maybe so. Mm -hmm. For yeah. me, at all season, I kept saying, like, you know, historically, I would care what chair I was sitting in, <laughs> as we know. Uh, this season, I go like this. I said to I said to production, I'm like, I don't care story wise where you want to put me. Just make sure I'm in good light. I'm old. I want there good we go. Light. That's, the, that's the after <laughs> you. I love it. I love it. Well, on on that note, sort of, what do you think about when you think about the five years that you weren't on the show? How do you think that you change as a person, and sort of how do you think that affected? how you approach the show in, in your comeback? Yeah, I think that being off the show, going and doing other projects and really feeling done with it. Like I never felt like I hadn't completed the mission. For sure. You know what I mean? Like there was mm -hmm. no, for me, there was no unfinished business there. So that was all really good. That is nice. Um, coming back, I think because my children are older, because I'm older, honestly, and hopefully more self-actualized as I get mm -hmm. older, and maybe also because of the pandemic, I would say that I'm just a little more relaxed. Mm. And I didn't come in, and maybe also because most of the people I knew were gone. I didn't feel like I, I had to worry about what anyone else was filming or talking about or doing or anything. I just had to be myself, show up, play the cards in front of me and that's it. And I think that's why one of the reasons I was so blindsided by the whole thing. And like right. I said before, like when I was watching them talk about me and I come back to the table, I was like, oh, it's so painful. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, it's, it's not like you're walking back into some sort of trap you're I mean no. like there's 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 two other new housewives this season there's a new friend like it you really is kind of, right it, it's also just it's a big re, it's almost a big reset for, for the show so it should feel that way and so yeah that makes sense um you know there's obviously two we have Jen and we have Noella two two new housewives and um it's seen again judging but all we get is really a trailer to judge things off of yeah. but it seems like you and Jen really really are, 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 have fun together, are on good terms. We see you in the sauna together with Emily having that sandwich. So you have moments with her and then it does seem like there's ha something happens with Noella and maybe Max. What can you tell me about your relationships with the two newbies? Well, you know, I, like I said, in that first party, I didn't get to know anybody. Mm. And um, honestly, for the first, maybe even three, four weeks of filming, I maybe met Noella three times. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So I really didn't get to know her until later. And we have a very odd um, start. And I, you're going to have to see how that one kind of plays out. Okay. But I'll tell you, just watching her in the first couple of you know, episodes, you know, she's obviously a very pretty girl and it's hard to fit in to a new group. So I appreciate that sometimes it's a little awkward, right? right? You give so her some grace that. there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. With Jen, again, I mean, I didn't, I didn't get to know her at the party, but my, some of my other girlfriends that are not cast members that were at the party, I mean, I think the audience knows them all by now, you know, Nancy <laughs> right. and Nina and Sarah, I mean, they're just always on the, on the show, but um, they were telling me how much they liked Jen. So even oh, though okay. I didn't get to really talk to her after the party, you can trust they, their said, word. they said, Jen is cool. So based on that, 
I actually set up um, a thing to go hang out with Jen. Amazing. And, and so, and, and you'll see how that all came to be and everything, but mm-hmm. I, I really liked her. She's, she's intense and she's smart and she's controlling in the bet like me in the best way possible. And, and she's also very funny and, and can laugh at herself. I mean, she's got like a lot of really great, great qualities. I think, I think she's going to end up being very, very successful on the show. Good. Yeah. I, I, I can sense that she has some of that, the, some of that formula that, that, that really works here. And um, she's beautiful. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. And it seems like Noella, I mean, it seems like she's going to have a tough, there's a lot going on in her life and there, there, there's, there, you know, there's a divorce and, and there's other things that have, you know, just made, made headlines and they're teased in the trailer. Yeah. What can you tell me about what we're going to see there and just how maybe the group will kind of support her or, or, or not kind of in that, in that process? Yeah. I mean, I obviously, you know, when someone's going through a difficult time, you always want to support them. Yes. So, and, and, and kind of hard when it's like a new friend. Exactly. To, to all of a sudden like jump into that role. So there, you, I mean, you'll see what happens, but there's girls that immediately connected with her that were close to her. Like I said, I didn't really know her for the first, you know, three, four weeks of filming. So the girls that immediately connected with her, hung out with her, were definitely there. And she and Nicole were very close. Right, right. So there's going to be, okay, interesting. Okay, so it might be a little more unexpected than we're being led to believe. Okay, Mm -hmm. interesting. Um, so when you, when you think about how this whole season went, I mean, it's, it, it, we're obviously very much at the beginning of it. What, how would you, how would you characterize it? Like, how would you describe how this season, is it, is it going to be more fun? Is it going to lean more on the drama? Is it going to be some, somewhere in between? How do you think back to it? I think it's actually a perfect combination of everything. You know, mm-hmm. I've been on this show where some seasons like the, the Brooks cancer gate season, I mean, like uh, that was just off too much, rail. right? It was, but I mean, like, it's what happened and it was crazy. And there's been other seasons that had like more petty nonsense drama, like the bow on the cake and the, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, I would, what I would say is I feel like this season is exactly what the show needed from what I have heard was some of the comments from the audience in these last few seasons, Mm -hmm. you know, you're getting all the drama but you're also getting that inspirational, aspirational lifestyle and the trips and the clothes. And um, I think the personal stories are incredibly compelling. Um, the season ends in a way I've never ended a season before. And I think it's oh, wow. very, very interesting. Um, I think it's very transitional in the best way possible. I think people are going to get reinvested in people and invested in some other people. And it's, it's going to be... I think very cool to see like where everything goes from here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I th- I do I agree with all that all of that in terms of what was missing. I think I think a lot of the aspirational stuff was missing, and that's that is just like a key element of Real Housewives, regardless of what city we're talking about. So I think for us to be focusing on that and bringing that back is really important. I do. Yeah, but you know, Gibson. I mean, like the best thing about these shows are the connectivity of everyone. Of course, yeah. So. And one of the reasons, like I would use Beverly Hills as an example, Beverly Hills seems to focus more on the group dynamic as opposed to their individual stories necessarily. Sure. Not that they don't have individual stories, but you you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, in Orange County, it's it's a little more even and you, you lean a little more into the personal stories and you definitely get that this season. But I think what really happened is like, there's, there's a really fat core group that is bonded together. That's nice. I mean, and again, yeah. I think that's been missing. It's like, that's, and you can't, you can't manufacture that. Like you, you, you can try to bring the right people in and ha- hope it happens, but you can't, you can't fake that by any means. No, you can't. And so that's why when I say it's transitional, I mean it in the best way. Like it's gonna, It's a great season. You're going to laugh. You're going to cry a little bit. You're going to be horrified, you're gonna laugh again. And then um, and then where does it go from here? That's, <laughs> I don't know. Right. And then for you personally, I mean, I think everyone's hoping that this is not just a one-off return for you, of course. So that's, that's I think, a given. Do you, obviously this is the beginning, of, this is the beginning of your new experience on, on Housewives. So I don't wanna like force you to, 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 to say anything, but 
it sounds like you had a good experience with this and, and, and you're glad you did it. You know, it's funny when you're a parent, they say like the days are long and the years are short, right? It's kind of like that. Oh yeah. I mean, when you're in it, you know, you know, it's, you're so like mercurial with your emotions and everything. It's like crazy. And then when it's, oh, and when it's over, you're like, wow, that went by so fast. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, and continuing with my child analogy, kind of like childbirth too. Like it's such a, it's painful and uh, such a hard recovery and the whole thing. And then you forget because they give you drugs <laughs> like that. Like, okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting that, that's what makes you want to do it again. So we'll see. Sure, we'll see. sure. We'll yeah. see how that works out. And then because the kids and the and your family was were, were such a integral part of your decision to come back, how did how don't, you don't have to speak for them, but do did they enjoy this experience? Did they obviously it felt natural? You said, but did they overall kind of have fun doing this with you? Um, no, it's a hassle. I mean, you know, it, <laughs> it, you know, these kinds of things seem like a good idea. Sure. When you're like, hey, we're, you know, we're going, we're filming, you know, the escape room we're going to to on Friday that I planned. We're gonna film, and they're like, why? Why can't we just go have fun? I'm like, look, I told them what we were doing. They want to see it. You know, we'll just we'll film it because you know, it. This is what's going on in our life. We're not manufacturing things, but I mm -hmm. like to plan little family outings, and you know, it's hard with such an age spread and different interests and everything. So, you know. It's not yeah. that easy for them. Yeah. And I will say, I think I think the first time I interviewed Heather, interviewed you, Heather, was like three or four years ago. I had you and Terry come in to the office and we did like a Facebook Live back when people were doing Facebook Lives. And yeah. it I, it just reminded, I mean, that moment was so fun, but seeing you and him together on the show again, it just reminds me of just you guys having a really fun dynamic. And he is just such, you guys are such partners in this and and like, you really, you aren't afraid to kind of tell each other how it is, but also laugh with one another. And I'm just excited to see those scenes just of just you guys. Cause like, I don't know. I just think that you're, you guys are such a great match and it's, you clearly have fun kind of just navigating this whole world together, you know? We do. And you know, one of the things that was really hard the last time we were on the show was that, you know, he just thought the whole thing was a big joke and he thought it was hilarious <laughs> right. and he loved pushing my buttons. And I was so it was so hard for me to come on this show from scripted work to this. And I thought my career was going to be over. And I was so horrified, like, what were people going to say about me? You know, it was it was just hard for me mm -hmm. when I started. And so it looked like we bickered a lot. And I hated that because even though we did have one period of time that was very challenging for us and we've talked about it. Other than that, like we're best friends. We get along great. Actually, yesterday was the 25 year anniversary of our blind date. No and, way. Yeah. And we always celebrate it. And, and, you know, we're very lucky and very happy together. And he's my best friend and we have a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm glad think, everyone will get to see yeah. that. No, I think it's, I think it's, you guys make for fun TV separately and together. So that's, well, you uh, know, we have a new show too. What's the new show? Get, 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 let's let's plug have, it. We have a new show um, called Seven Year Stitch that's going right. to be coming out. Yes, yes, on yes. E. And it's, you know, us basically opening up our Rolodex and trying to fix couples. So is it are, like any any couples that we'll know, that we'll know already, like like any famous couples or are no, they no, friends? No, no, not famous or, couples. Like okay. We're taking people who need our help. Regular, you know, regular. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, because on my podcast, people are always asking, you know, for relationship advice mm. or this advice or that, you know, people call me and Terry, couple goals. We've managed to survive the reality show curse, you know, mm -hmm. and so far, not One of the rare, yeah. Not and wood. so, you know, it was like, Hey, if, if we could help people and use our resources to like stitch couples back together at that precarious time in their relationship, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, cool. that is really fun. Helping. I love that. What would you say is the kind of key for you guys of avoiding that, again, knock on wood, avoiding that, that reality TV curse? Cause I think they're, they're I think you're, you're really, you really are one of those really strong couples that weathers the storms. I think the truth is a lot of couples when they come on the show are already in trouble. Right. I've heard people. Yeah. And I think this show just polarizes it, exacerbates it, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think for us, that one period of time that was really bad for us, we nipped it in the bud really fast and we talked and we got through it together. And, you know, that's always been us. 
but look, we also got lucky, you know, relationships are a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And even though you can dot all your I's and cross all your T's and think you're with the right person, you don't always know what, what time and life is going to do to you, to your partner, to your relationship. And so we've always loved each other and we've always had a great partnership, but we've also been very lucky and, and, you know, we, we got it right the first time. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, Heather, that's a really good note to end on. It's it's so fun to catch up with you again. I think I, I would speak for most people in this Bravo war universe that we're extremely happy to have you back on Housewives. Um, where can people listen to the podcast? What, get, do your plugs before we sign off. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So you can follow me on social media at Heather Dubrow any kind of social media, except I really don't do TikTok because it's just not, in my, I don't have the bandwidth for that. You and me both. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my podcast, Heather Dubrow's World, you can find wherever you get your podcast. And if you want to pick up Max's book, it's called I'll Give It To You Straightish: What Your Teen Wants You To Know. Amazing. All right, Heather, Thank we'll talk you. soon and uh, have a great rest of your week. Yeah. You too. Bye. Bye, honey. Thank you so much for listening. For more celebrity interviews, subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you heard, please rate and review us as any show of support you can give us would be greatly appreciated. You can follow me at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram, and you can follow In The Know at In The Know on Twitter and at Watch In The Know on Instagram. We'll talk to you next time.